So ladies and gentlemen, the positive cases that we are now reporting, as you all know, are a result of community transmission. And we are aware now that the disease is firmly within our urban and rural settings. And as of yesterday, 40 out of 47 counties had reported cases of COVID-19, which amounts to about 85% of counties in the country. Nairobi is leading with 2,428 cases, followed with Mombasa with 1,304 cases, followed by Busia and Kajiado, which have had many cases in terms of cross-border truck drivers. And we have the numbers at 361 and 179 cases, respectively. The other cases that we've had, we've had 155 from Kiambu, where Singisho has had 66, Migori 59, Kilifi 52, Kwale 51, Machakos 44, Nakuru 32, Garissa 25, Tetataveta 25, Kisumu 20, Mandera 18, Wajira 17. And this information is available for you articulating the cumulative caseload per county in the country. Mombasa and Nairobi city counties have had the highest infection rate of COVID-19. And we've been able to look at this and define that Mombasa has an attack rate of about 107, whereas Nairobi has about an attack rate of 55. And this, these statistics are important because it tells us that the risk of transmission the risk of you getting COVID-19 is higher in Mombasa compared to Nairobi counties. And again, we're working to ensure that we are actually able to define risk per county as we continue going forward. And therefore, from all these statistics, it becomes less tenable to isolate confirmed COVID-19 patients in hospital-based treatment. And therefore, we, as we roll out the home-based care protocol, it's important to know that we are focusing on our high burden counties particularly those that have a high attack rate. And as highlighted, that is Mombasa and Nairobi. We are working with community health workers and volunteers to ensure that we educate our households and our caregivers in this program. And the training, as I've said, is targeted particularly in the high-risk counties. And this is where we will start the rollout of the home-based care protocol. In terms of training, some of you might wonder, what exactly is this training focused on? And the idea is that we're able to go to households, we're able to get in touch with the family members, take them through what it means to be eligible for home-based care. So not every single Kenyan is eligible for home-based care. There's actually a criteria that determines who would be able to be enrolled into the home-based care program. We then review the feasibility. How are you able to actually ensure that the home-based care program is working in your household? And then what are the procedures that need to be in place? How do we monitor? How shall the healthcare worker be able to engage with you to ensure that we're looking after you and your family and ensuring that you're adhering to the home-based care protocols? It is important to know that our training goes further to empower individuals and households with basic knowledge, skills, and competencies to be able to enable them to function as caregivers of COVID-19 patients. And in addition to this, we are utilizing our other community-based structures, such as the Nyumbakumi Initiative and the Community Health Committees, to ensure that there is actually compliance of these protocols. For eligibility, eligible patients for this program are usually assessed by a healthcare worker. And as mentioned and highlighted yesterday by the DG, the first criteria is that you have to be COVID-19 positive. Number two, you have to be asymptomatic. That means you do not have or you do not present with the symptoms, Amazile Dalili is a COVID-19. Or if you have any symptoms, then you have very mild symptoms and you have no underlying medical conditions. Asymptomatic patients are therefore put in this program. And in terms of discharge, how does the discharge criteria look like? Discharge happens at 14 days from the date of the first COVID-19 test. And this must be in line with ensuring that at the point of discharge, this patient does not have any symptoms. So you've been at home for 14 days. We did your first test. It was COVID-19 positive. We've come back at 14 days. We've done a subsequent test and you're negative and you have no symptoms. If we have uh, mild symptomatic patients, these ones will only be discharged if they have not developed fever for at least 72 hours. And this is important. As highlighted earlier, 
we are focusing home-based care on patients who do not have symptoms or those who have mild symptoms. If you have mild symptoms and one of the symptoms you have is fever, raised temperature, then it would mean that you're only discharged from home-based care upon you not recording a fever for 72 hours and that you're also not on any medication that would be helping suppress your fever. Now, in the event that your condition deteriorates, because we appreciate that, yes, you could be asymptomatic and you're enrolled in the home-based care protocol, and perhaps at some point your condition deteriorates, what actions can you take as a caregiver? One, you call the 719 number. You could also do the text message. And you could also contact your designated healthcare worker, and a process of admission would then ensue from that point. Now, on to our COVID-19 situation. In terms of statistics today, we tested 4,859 samples, of which 254 people tested positive for the virus. Therefore, this brings to total our country caseload to 5,206. The total number of tests conducted thus far cumulatively from the beginning is 151,396,000 ,000 tests. All the positive cases are Kenyans, and we have 186 of them as male and 68 as female. And it's important to note the trend continues. Our male patients, our Kenyans, our fathers and brothers continue to be the ones who are highly afflicted with COVID-19. And with regard to the 254 positive cases, in terms of county distribution, we have Nairobi having 127, Mombasa having 36, Migori 29, Kajiado 22, Kiambu 12, Busia 9, Wasingishu 5, Muranga 3, Machakos and Kilifi have registered two cases, and we have one case from Nakuru, Siaya, Taita Taveta, Garissa, Isiolo, Kakamega, and Kisi, all having one case. We do also have distribution in terms of um, sub-county, and I'll highlight some of the key ones. I won't go through to all of them. In Nairobi, we, from the 127 cases, we now have 32 cases from Westlands. In terms of Dagoreti North, we have 18. Langata has 16. Kamukunji has 14. And Bakasi East has 12. In terms of Mombasa, we have 36 cases from Mombasa, of which 11 are from Vita. Jomvu has eight, Kisauni and Likoni both have five. And in Migori, the area that has the most caseload would be from Suna East. In Kiambu, of the 12 cases that we've mentioned, most four each are from Thika and Kiambu town. In Busia, in terms of the nine cases, we have seven from Teso South. In Wasingishu, the five cases, we have three from Ang Aina Bakoi and Tabo and Keses have one case each. In Machakos, we have a case in Athi River and one in Matungulu. And in Kilifi, we have two cases in Rabai and one in Kilifi South. We will provide you with this disaggregated um, case list. What we are noticing is that now the disease is really spreading across all the different um, wards within the country in terms of the counties that are afflicted. 